These are officially done and out of my life. Sayonara tomato cages. I'm gonna show you how to make one. That actually increases the yields with way less cost. Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley. I'm removing my sunglasses because it feels really awkward to talk to someone with glasses on. I don't know why. My name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I'd like to take all that science, including plant science, because that's my minor, and apply to plants. In today's video, we're talking about tomatoes. So I have used giant jumbo sized tomato cages for years now. These will run you or set you back about $10 two years ago I think now they're about 12 bucks a piece and you can get one smaller than this however I grow mostly indeterminate tomatoes or only indeterminate tomatoes not determinants and so my tomatoes actually lack in yield due to the use of the tomato cage so today's video I'm going to show you the new design that I have here behind me and a bit of the size behind why this design is going to increase yields for my tomato patch without this. So many of you may or may not know that I, tomatoes are my absolute favorite crop to grow. Behind me here I have a ton of tomatoes. Um, some people will argue I have too many for the size of bed I have. However, keep in mind tomatoes are grown hydroponically. They are grown in containers, five gallon pail, uh, buckets, that sort of thing. This is substantially larger than a five gallon pail bucket and so long as I'm providing the nutrients the plant needs, the water the plant needs, and the sunlight it needs, I'm gonna be just fine. So don't concern yourself with me having too many tomatoes and let me show you how to increase the yield of tomatoes planted in a small patch. So this design that I made, um, I found online and I initially saw like boxes on top of like four posts and then strings coming down from that and then I thought, well, if I did a single board with kind of wood coming off the sides of that, that would work. However, I do think that there is another YouTuber out there that has coined this as his. So I'm going to put that here because I don't want to get in trouble for stealing anyone's ideas. Um, but I, I don't know what his name is, but someone told me that, oh yeah, there's a YouTuber who claims that's his design. So I'm going to put that right there. But nonetheless, all I did was essentially take two boards stick them straight up in the air, put a board in between, that was the length of the bed, and then I put four foot bed posts, because my beds are eight by four, or deck posts, bed posts, um, across the top, and I hung string down from it. So I do use two different types of string. I use like a construction string that's a little bit stronger, supposedly, and then I literally used um, crochet, like wool string. I'm not gonna lie, the wool type is my favorite so far. Um, I'm finding it a lot easier to actually wrap around the tomato compared to the construction string, which doesn't have nearly as much flex to it. However, the added flex may be a detriment later on as these tomatoes get larger, but I'll report back as to whether or not that is the case. So all you're gonna do is simply take these boards, I put L brackets in the corners, um, just so that there's a little bit extra support, and then the beams above, which may annoy some people. I know it annoys Bob, but I put just a single screw through that. And the reason for that is because now those um, bars are adjustable. So next year, if I transplant in a different fashion, or maybe I'm doing some intercropping, whatever the case is, I'm able to actually move the bar in whichever direction or angle I need rather than straight out. So ideally, when you go to plant the tomatoes, this would be wrapped around the root ball and then planted in the ground with the cord. But because I did this later this year after my tomatoes were planted, I'm actually just doing kind of a slip knot at the bottom and then twisting the tomato around. So as time goes on, I will continue to twist and clip the tomato plant to the actual trellising string. And my hopes here is that I will gain more yield. Now, a bit of the science behind why you need to trellis tomatoes and why something like this isn't necessarily going to increase your yields. So something like this would be best used for a determinant to tomato. I don't know many people in Canada or America that grow determinant varieties. Now determinant varieties have a set point and they're done growing at a certain height and that's usually about four 
feet on average. However, of course, there's like the tiny micro tomatoes, etc., and so forth. Someone's going to correct me on that. That will grow even smaller than this. But this is big enough for something of that size. However, if we're talking about an indeterminate tomato, depending on the year, some years I've gotten tomatoes that are very easily eight to 10 feet tall, but they are just literally cascading back over the sides of this cage. So it's simply just not large enough. So my solution is to literally have an eight foot board straight up in the air to help contend with that. What happens when we make our tomato taller, we are able to get more light in and around the foliage, which means more photosynthesis. That combined with proper pruning is going to ensure that the chemistry is happening inside of that plant to provide the nutrients that is much needed. Now keep in mind also with trellising, it reduces stress on the plant. Whenever we have a plant that has outgrown its tomato cage and is beginning to flop over the sides, we end up stressing the plant out. This can come in many different forms, but in the case of a tomato, the tomato may say to itself, okay, I don't have enough support to support the growth of more tomatoes or larger sized tomatoes. So I need to back off on my flower production and go more into vegetative growth because I need more energy to be able to support those tomatoes and hopefully grow a thicker stem. So to trick your tomato into thinking it's doing good enough with its main stem, we simply support it. So then it thinks, okay, I'm good to go. I can make bigger and better tomatoes that have more seeds in them so I can do a better job. Um, that's essentially the kindergarten way of explaining that. But that's why something like this is going to help enormously. And that brings me into why I'm not sure which cording is going to work the best, whether it's going to be this more firm construction twine with very little flex in it, or if it's going to be this wool. My concern with the wool version of this is that the flex is going to still cause some stress in that tomato and make the tomato think that it's not very well supported compared to the construction thread, which will tell the plant, hey, listen, you got all the support in the world, you are good to go. So that's my concern uh, about the two. But regardless, this is a super simple, inexpensive way of making a tomato trellis. Each one of this cost me grand total, um, even with like the stain and stuff I did on it, $74 Canadian, um, which comes out to around $35 per tomato bed. This is a one-time investment that I will not have to invest in any longer. And I'm planting in each bed, I'll put the number here, I'll actually do a count on how many tomatoes are in each bed um, here, times that by $12. <laughs> And that's how much money I saved because that's how much one of these bad boys cost. And it doesn't necessarily give me higher yields. So I'm excited for this. I'm excited to increase my tomato, my potato, nightshade family, same thing. Um, my tomato production and we will see. So if you did not know, that's my conventional bed where I use conventional fertilizers. And this is my organic bed where I use organic fertilizers. And we're just doing a long-term experiment over time. Um, this has been running for about three years now, but we will see what happens. Um, yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Hope you enjoy this. If you have any unique or um, inexpensive ways to trellis tomatoes, please let me know. These two beds are not all my tomatoes I'm growing. I'm sad to admit. I'm obsessed, but I make literally uh, pizza sauce, whole tomatoes, uh, pasta sauce, tomato paste, you name it. I make it salsa, did I say salsa? I think I said salsa. I literally make everything, so just, anyways. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.